How'd you get into jazz? In the community well, as being a li leading I figure. Was, I was a real, real Gene Krupa uh -huh. fan when I was, uh, I tried to emulate some of the things that the Krupa did right. as a kid. And then when I got into college, I met the uh, Armin Boatman, and we had a little jazz trio. And then we added the uh, alto sax, mm -hmm. uh, Phil McClintock, and we tried to duplicate the Brubeck sound. Okay, so who was the drummer in that group that influenced you in Brubeck's group? Then? Uh, Joe Morello, primarily. Joe. Yeah. Okay. So he was a big influence in your life. Oh yeah. As a drummer. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you ever meet him? I did. In fact, I was going to drop out of college and go to San Francisco and study with Morello, but it never did. I was married at the time, raising a family, mm -hmm. so I had to make a decision whether I wanted to continue with my education, of which I did, become a school teacher, or to uh, go to California and study drums with Joe. And then I got to work with a very, very well-known piano player at the Rockaway, by the name of Joe Close, mm -hmm. and uh, Joe and I did a duo down there without a bass, p just piano and drums, Ouch. and uh, we played down there for a long time. Well, now, who's the organ player that you played with down there? That was Gene Duray. Gene Duray, okay. And Norm Fredham, they're both gone. And Norm played what? Guitar. Guitar. Wonderful guitars. Okay. Wonderful guitars and singer. Storm and Norman. Storm and Norman, we used to call it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you played with Armin for a while, too, right? A long time, yeah. And how did, you said uh, you did that while you were in college, but how did that come about that you put the trio together and started expanding it? Well, I was in college also. Okay, so you met them, him in college? I did. Okay. Who else was in the Boatman group? Well, Boatman transferred from the University of Washington to Spokane. Okay. <clears throat> enrolled in Cheney out there, EWCE back then, and uh, that's how I met Armin, and we started uh, just playing around in the uh, in the practice rooms, and uh, found out that there was people coming to listen to us. Later, I just had the I just had the opportunity to sit in with him. I never played with him. I just sat in with him out at the concert. Well, you played. Freddie Schreiber was the bass player. Yep. And the drummer uh, was, uh, he's the one that taught me the nanny go. I wrote it out on a napkin. His name was John Ray. And I said, is this anything like you're doing on that last tune? And he looked at it, and he grabbed the pen and the, and the napkin, and he wrote it out for me. <laughs> John Ray. Yeah, nice man. Very nice man. One hell of a player. Oh boy. He was the he was the first person I ever saw play the, the, what they called back then flatjacks. I've got a set of them now. They're called traps. <laughs> did you uh, did you accompany her and back up Ethel Landis when she was in the area? Oh, Wonderful yeah. singer. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember who uh, was that with? That was with Jack Lyman and, okay. and uh, uh, the Satin Brass. Yeah, can you tell us who she oh. was so the people on the table know? Well, she's something? from Baltimore. Yeah. And uh, she has her own club, or had her own club in Baltimore called Ethel's Place. Uh -huh. And she was a wonderful, wonderful entertainer and just a great lady. We go shopping together, grocery shopping. Oh, correct. And she would have on this fluorescent purple tight pants. <laughs> A fluorescent orange sweater with a fluorescent pink headband and high heels. And we go arm in arm with the grocery store. I had a little skinny dude. I had a goatee, you know, and, uh, and uh, <laughs> go to the grocery store. And then she did all the cooking. We had uh, these rooms uh, that had little kitchenettes in them and whatnot. So you knew her fairly well. Oh, yeah. Off the bandstand as well as on the bandstand. Oh yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. She I didn't was, know she that. Was a, she was a character, and uh, so you were touring with her. Yeah. No, we were playing at the Olympic Hotel in, in Seattle. Oh. Okay. And then we traded sets with uh, the Kim Sisters, I believe, was the other act. And about when was this? There are some of the people <clears throat> you did. You've done a lot of backing up of entertainers, and and even though. 
Fred Hartley said you couldn't read. <laughs> well, I bet Sue Rainey. You must have had incredible uh, instincts yeah. because you were a great, you've always been a great accompanist. So yeah. who are some of the other people that you've backed up? For Sue Rainey. Sue Rainey. Okay. Um, let's see, Ethel Ennis, Sue Rainey. Uh, Pete Barbier. Oh, Pamela McGuire. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Natalie Monte, uh -huh. vocalist. Sue Edder. Sue Edder. Yeah. And that was oh, and, and then my, one of my very, very favorites is Marty Lupert. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. what a wonderful singer she is. So you were in uh, Bill Reed's group with Carl. Yes. And who were the singers? Marty Lupert sang with that group? Yes, she did, and so did Sue Edder. And Sue Edder. Okay. And then oh. um, Carl mentioned something, about, I think, about Barbudi. Oh yeah, yeah, we did the Barbudi shows, yeah. Yeah, okay. Pete Barbudi, what a funny man. One time, he, he, he'd say, give me a roll. Brrr, crash. So I went into the, the kitchen on the break, and I got a dinner roll. And I hit it inside my coat pocket. And during the evening, the evening he goes through, he's like, he says, give me a roll. And I reach in my pocket, he said, he turned around and said, give me a roll. And I threw that at him. I threw this dinner roll at him. And he did a takeoff on that. Just spontaneous off the top of his head. I, I thought I was going to fall off my drums. I was laughing so hard. The guy did a takeoff, dinner roll versus bear claw, da 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 da. He had audience in stitches. <laughs>